The As Is podcast does not necessarily hold the views or opinions of our guests. The guests have a right to express their own thoughts, and those thoughts are protected with their freedom of speech. What they say is what they say, and we allow them the right to speak on their own behalf. The As Is podcast is not responsible nor liable for the opinions and stories of others. Welcome to another edition of the As Is Podcast. Today's special guest, Chicago native and resident, Bo Deal. Bo, you there? Yeah, I'm here. What's going on, my brother? What's good, man? Hey, uh, why don't you tell us who you are for those that are not familiar right off the gate? Uh, Bo Deal, uh, music management, father, son, uh, you know, got into music from uh while i was incarcerated on a drug conspiracy and started started doing it for fun came home ended up on 106 of park freestyle friday uh made a bunch of connects from there and made it work for me to make a whole lot of money doing it yeah i remember that uh 106 in park that was uh definitely a classic thing <laughs> how'd you get on that show uh you know what i just came home and we shot this video this dvd called uh ghetto passes where we went through like all the hoods in chicago showing the the respect that we got throughout the city and we we hit every block and then we do freestyles on those blocks somehow it ended up in the hands of a terrence down at uh 106 apart and uh my cousin mississippi plugged me in he, he was down there talked to uh to terrence and they they called me down there to do it and you know that was that was all she wrote from there. What was it like, man? Like coming home from jail, and now being on TV on the nationally syndicated show. What was that feeling like? You know what? It was a real good feeling. Um, I wasn't even supposed to be in New York. I was on uh, on parole because I right. just came home. I had three years paper, so I wasn't supposed to even be there. I went there anyway, took a chance, and it felt good, you know, to come from just doing some years behind bars and come home and now you on one of the biggest platforms in the world uh represent your city you know what i'm saying a lot of people that was that i was locked up with they couldn't believe that i was on there so it, it gave like a lot of, it gave the streets hope it gave people in the jails hope because somebody who was just in the same situation as them came home and was doing something productive so uh i think that, that that's the move that really won me over in, in the streets. You know what I'm saying? I, after that, it was I was embraced everywhere throughout the city. Let me ask you this. How important is it for respect in the streets? Because you are a former gang uh, person. How, you know what? L let me just do this. For our listeners that don't really understand, like there's different languages and lingos that go uh, with different people. So I don't want to say it the wrong way because some people take offense to it. So how do you properly say someone who belonged to an organization? You know, you you can't use a part of an organization. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? You can't really sugarcoat it. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. You know, I, I, I know what I know what I was part of. I know what I did. I, you know, I I know it. The only people who who got a problem with it are people who are in denial. You know what I'm saying? And, and wish they could could change the past of the things they've done. With me, I don't I don't regret none of it because. All of it made me the person who I am today. That's what's you up. Know? So you were part of the Vice Lords, correct? Yeah, yeah, Mafia Insane. Vice Mafia Lord. Insane. Well, uh, explain what that is, because some people are not going to know. Uh, you know, the Vice, a lot of people from out of town, they feel like Vice Lords is all the same. But it's not. You got different branches that got their own different kings and different chiefs and, and things of that nature, even though the the... The foundation is the same as far as with the literature and things of that nature. Uh, you got different families in it. So you got conservatives, undertakers, unknowns, travelers, uh, mafias, insanes. So that's, you know, that's that's what I was, a part of a, a different uh, a, a different family within the family. Right. You know, Chicago is, is, is a funny place, man. And, and there's a lot of organizations and different structures 
in Chicago. Uh, I think they might be behind L.A. as far as the gang banging is concerned because that's what most people really know about or it used to be that way because now when you hear the word Chicago or the state Chicago, people like, <laughs> you know, they, uh, they kind of look leery because of all the stuff going on in Chicago. Let's talk about uh, some of the violence and some of the stuff that goes on as a result of that culture. How do you feel about it? Uh, I feel I feel a lot of the stuff that's going on right now was it was uh it was designed the, the you know the it was designed for it to go that way like they understood see back when I was coming up we had chiefs we had laws rules and regulations that we had to abide by or you could be violated or shot sometimes even killed if you didn't if you didn't live and abide by those by those laws uh, now. You know what the what the government did was they took a, all the gang chiefs and people with with uh all the authority figures and and the shot callers they they took them off the streets locked them up gave them a whole lot of time and things of that nature and you know the saying uh cut off the head and the body will fall is is a true statement because with no with nobody to to answer to you pretty much able to do whatever you want to do. And that's what these shorties doing now. They don't have no, no structure and they don't have nobody uh, calling those shots. So they're able to do what they want to do. And they, they say it all the time. Like they'll tell you, I ain't got no big homies. Uh, you know, don't nobody call it for us over here. We do what we want to do. And that's because uh, all of the, the chiefs and, and authority figures ended up getting a whole lot of time uh, leaving these shorties out here to, to pretty much fend for themselves. So you think that's why nobody ever wants to step up and be the HNIC, the head nigga in charge, because they know that it, if you get caught as that HNIC, that you're going to get an asshole full? Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. And then the the ones who coming home, they look at it like these shorties too far gone. So if I step back out here to try and get them in, in, in line, you know, I'm going to end up risking my, my life or my freedom to try and, and, and correct something that's that's too far gone. So, you know, I, I get it. I get it. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's designed for that, man. You know what? Let me ask you this. A lot of brothers go to jail, they, you know, uh, for whatever they go to jail for. And some of them find religion. Some of them find God. So, you know, whatever it is that they find. And there's a change within them. Like, take us through that process because you definitely uh, seem to have changed. And you're trying to do the right thing for your community. So break down that transition for us so we can understand what's needed. Well, you know what? It, it's, it's really all on the, on the person because you know when you had enough and you know when, when you're ready to change change your life. You know what I'm saying? It all come at different times. And, and sometimes um, it takes certain experiences for you to go through to realize that it ain't no, it ain't no uh, winning or beating the streets at all. So for me... Mine was, you know, I was locked up when my uh, oldest child was born. And then when, when when my son was born, I was locked up and came home when he was almost four years old. I had left when uh, when his mother was two months pregnant and I came home. He was four. So I, I missed, uh, you know, all those years. So while I was sitting in, in, in there, I just realized that, you know, this is not the type of life I want to live. I don't want to be the type of father to have to raise my kids from behind bars you know what i'm saying right and then i also knew that it was a it was a a blessing for me to get the time that i got because i was supposed to get 15 years for that conspiracy but my lawyer had a close relationship with the with the judge and uh they got me they got me half of that so i ended up you know getting it was seven, and then another year for another case that was ran wild. So I ended up getting eight years. I did it a little over three three years, and uh, and, and was back down. So I knew I knew if I if I caught another case or ended up violating that, then it it wasn't gonna be nothing that could save me. Now I can say this because it's, it's been over seven years. When I came home from the joint, I didn't have no uh, no money. Well, I had a little bit of money. We put it behind the music, and uh, it ran out quick putting it behind the music. So I ended up going to another state, and my homie, you know, he told me he had uh, 
he was throwing shows, making money. So I went down there to help him throw the shows, get down there. And he not throwing no show. He selling bricks. Wow. So I got back down in the game for for about a year and, and, and got up out of there, stacked up enough money to where I felt, okay, I'm comfortable. Now I can really focus on, on doing the music. And, and I look at it like that. That's what God did because a couple years later, they end the feds end up grabbing all of them and the ones that they didn't grab, they got them on tax evasion and things of that nature. So, you know, I got out just in time, man, and I've been blessed ever since. You know what? And that seems to be a lot of people's stories, uh, especially in the music industry. How real is it that the drug industry fuels the music industry? No, it's real. I mean, because you you gotta you gotta you gotta pay for things like the majority of the people that's out here in the streets in our communities have backgrounds and they they've been through uh the, the system now going through the system it's hard to come out and find a, a job that you could really support and take care of your family with you know what i'm saying so what 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 are you, what else you gonna do you go back to what you know right and, and the, the the drug game is the quickest way to make good money to 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 fund what it is you're doing it's either the drug game or or, or the stick up man you know what i'm saying i i have my share of both wow let me ask you this how do you think your people or because you're on a positive note now you still have your foot you know into the streets and you have to i guess uh how do the people from the organization you left feel about you and what do they, they say love me. they love me because they they know that even though I'm on this side of the fence with, with being, because see, one thing I can say, I'm a former gang, gang, active gang member, former. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But what you are, you always will be. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I, I don't believe in, if you if you was really about that, it's in your heart. So it's, it's in my heart. I am what I am. I'm not, I'm not anti-gang. You know right. what I'm saying? I'm, I'm anti uh, uh, the criminal activities, you know what I'm saying, and things of that nature. That's that's what I am. Right. So, you know, it's not a crime to 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 be a part of an organization. You know what I'm saying. For and, those when you start. No, go. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, but when you start partaking in, in the in the criminal part of it, that's where the problem come in. At. But how realistic is to be? How realistic is it to actually be in a gang and not be involved in crime? You know, believe it or not, there's a lot of guys who 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 was in gangs and not involved in crime. You look at, at, at professional athletes, who, right? You know, Derrick Rose. You look at, you know, you find a lot of a lot of guys who who was a part of of organizations and didn't gang bang. You know what I'm saying? Everybody don't gang bang. Everybody had a they play their position some people he the ladies man so you know that he gonna bring all the girls through this dude he the he the shooter so he gonna take care of the business this the hustler right here he gonna make the money this the dude right here he good at the at the scams this dude right here you know he he can he can uh write help write up the literature and things of that nature it's it's everybody play play their position not everybody is involved in the in the criminal part of it you know what i'm saying right so yeah that, and and i think that when you know that, it 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 it, it save a lot of brothers. That way, you don't have a lot of people going on on these licks uh, or, or going to go do things, and then they get caught in their tail because you wasn't that wasn't your position anyway. You played a position you knew nothing about, right? And you paid for it. You know what I'm saying? It took down a lot of good people with you. You know what? Chicago is one of those kind of places where. You hear about all of the gang banging and you hear about the murders and the killings uh, and those that are involved in it. Let me ask you, do they join these organizations based on wanting to or do they do it sometimes because they have to? And when I say have to, I mean, it's like if you you brand new, you move from wherever you move from Arkansas, you know, wherever, wherever you come from and you move on a block that's controlled by vice lords. And then maybe around the corner, there might be another section of another gang or whatever the case is. But because you're a neutron and you don't belong to anything and that block is predominantly vice lords, is there a pressure for you to become vice lord? Is there a way for that person to just not be involved with that at all? Or is it like you live on this block now, you want us? 
Nah, you, you, it was really by choice. You know what I'm saying? Some people was born in it. Like some people grew up in a household where they, they father was this, their brothers is this. You know what I'm saying? Some people saw it and, and just wanted to be a part of something. They was looking for a, a family. They didn't have no big brothers. Or they mother, their parents worked and, and things of that nature. So they looked up to the guys out there on the block. Some people uh, just was fascinated by the lifestyle. They was a good kid. They had everything. They didn't have to game bang. But they was they 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 was thrilled by the excitement that that it looked like these guys was having. They had all the money, they had all the girls, they 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 dress fly. You know what I'm saying? They moving around. It's a bunch of them. They seem to to be down for each other, uh, uh, ride or die. You know what I'm saying? It's it's all different reasons why. And then you had some people who was just scared, who was like, damn scared i, I want to be a part of this and then you had some people who was neutrons and 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 didn't join the gang but because they went to school over here or had to walk to school they walk it past other organizations and and the other gangs like you know fuck them up because they like no nah, you from down there even though you're not a part of the gang you live down there so they just throw you in that box so eventually you know you fall off into it and you like well you know they fucking me up anyway for living down here, so I might as well be a part of it. You know right. what I'm saying? Like I've seen, I've seen a bunch of different scenarios that that had somebody to join the game. Let me ask you this: If that's the way it is in the streets, let's talk about the prison system. <laughs> How is that? Like when you go into the jails, you know, uh, do you have to belong to an organization to live? Nah, nah. You when you come in, they ask you like, uh, you know, what year? They don't know you. I'm a vice lord. All the brothers over there, you go where the brothers at. You know what I'm saying? The GDs the, or the folks, y'all over this way. Uh, no, nah, I ain't a part of that. Okay, the neutrons over there. You know what I'm saying? So the neutrons had their own little, little uh, click. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, they was last to get chow and, and eating things of that nature, but they had their own little tables. They had, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, yeah, yeah. They it wasn't like you was forced usually. Usually a lot of guys don't don't come in and, and say, okay, well, I'm going to join again. You got a few, but the majority of them, if you wasn't plugged in the, in, in the world, then I think it's stupid as fuck to go to jail and, and, and start claiming something. Yeah, that, yeah. I mean, you know, I guess it depends on each person's strength. But you know what? Let me ask you this. Today, it seems as if you could be a vice lord, you could be a GD, you could be a four corner hustler, you could be whatever it is you are. But I've noticed that a lot of these organizations and members and former members are now uniting together to do whatever it is they do. They do. Uh, have you noticed that? Yeah, it's clicks now. They don't give a fuck if you're a GD, a vice lord, a BD. You got GDs with BDs and they saying they BDK. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and vice versa. Right. You know? Uh, what brought about, about what brought about that change? No, it ain't, it ain't about what you is nowadays. It's about who you clicked up with. But what brought about that change? What made people start to see that you know I don't have to be you know I could be a four corner hustler and still run with BDs. Uh, no structure. You know what I'm saying? The the, the cheese is gone. Like like back back when we was coming up, and yeah, you better not uh, have no. Nigga around you uh, who ain't a part of that mob call it, causing no trouble or calling no shots or, or bringing heat back to the mob, they'll fuck you up and him. You know right. what I'm saying? So so that's all it is. You're able to do whatever you want to do. Right. Well, you know what? I think that I think that what you go through, like and you've already said it, I think what you go through makes you who you are and that allows you to travel and, and you have a, a, a better view of the world. And I think that you've taken that uh, better view because you've been through it and tried to put it to good use. And the reason why I say that is because now I know that you're a part of conflict resolution. Uh, tell us what that's about and what you do. Uh, we, you know, I do uh, we do the violence prevention and I got my own uh, non for profit called uh, Perfect Vision Empowered. You know what I'm saying? So. I, uh, what we do, we, we do outreach work. We go out there and we touch the shorty. You know what I'm saying? We we help them get jobs, uh, uh, job training, uh, victim services. If, if if a family member has been shot or killed, we help them 
figure out how to get the funeral uh, paid for or, or assist in whatever way we can with with counseling uh, for the families and things of that nature. So uh, we, we we hands on with 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 the, in the community, man, like none stop. We, we go hard and, and they know that I genuinely care. They know I'm. I'm I'm really trying to help. Like what we do, we have uh, these toy giveaways. Like every week, we hit a different block. So if we hit your block today, later on that day, we're going to hit whoever y'all ops is. We hit Nate block. You know what I'm saying? And p- giving out toys and basketballs and footballs and things of that nature to Barbie dolls and things like that to the to the kids. Right. Like my thing is trying to reach them, reach the kids early. Because sometimes when they get to a certain age, they mind made up and it's hard to change it. They got to learn on their own time. You know what I'm saying? Like we, yeah. we, we able to touch some of them, but you, it's a lot of them that, that they ain't trying to hear nothing you're talking about. So we trying to catch them early before they uh, really make their mind up that this is what they want to do. You know what? When you when you think back, let me take you back for a minute. When you were the ages of the kids that you try to save, and you think about it, when you've seen a person come through like you, if there was a person that came through like you, how do you think they feel, how do you feel when you know in the back of their minds they might be saying, this old ass nigga coming in here trying to preach all this old gospel shit, I ain't trying to hear that. How does I, that I, I, I would have done that, but it depends on, like, it ain't the message all the time. Sometimes it's the messenger. Right. See, like with me, I got an advantage. I got a, I got an advantage, and I got a cheat code because the guys who they look up to, from Chief Keith to uh, uh, Lil Herb, and uh, even Rest in Peace FBG, all these guys look at me like a big homie. So they always say they address me, at, "What's up, big bro?" And these other guys who coming up after them, they look at they 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 look at these guys like man, they give they 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 treat him with the utmost respect, even though we know that he rock with them and he rock with them and he rock with them. They they look at him as a man of respect, so I'm gonna respect him. You know what I'm saying? And, right. And and that's my cheat code. So they ain't looking at me, even though they know I'm older. But they ain't looking at me like this nigga washed up. Right. This, this, you know what I'm saying? Right. Nah, I'm still out here hands on. And the guys that y'all look up to and honor and respect call me big bro. You know what I'm saying? Right. And respect what I'm saying. You right. know. So so I I got a I got a a, a cheat code that a lot of older guys don't have you know what i'm saying and that's the experience and, and that's a good thing but you know what since you brought that up god rest his soul but tell us the things that were surrounding or, or, or the relationship you had with fbg duck i was like a little brother like I, I i helped him i helped him get money you know what i'm saying i helped him i gave him a lot of uh pointers and, and when it came down to his music career uh he used to call me all the time i got numerous texts and things of that nature of him just asking what direction he, he should go in and some of the things that he should do. You know, he wanted me to, he told me he was trying to get out of his uh, management contract uh, before he wanted me to to work with him. Like he, he you know, I, I had a close relationship with him, you know, and, and he respected me because when Chief Keith and was on top of the world, they was the biggest artists in the world. I had just uh, brought Walker to Keith house and, we had shot the murder video and things of that nature. And uh and Duck came to the studio with with a homie of mine and uh Ray Ray. And they like, man, that's FBG Duck. That's uh, you know, he he keeps them up. And uh I still embraced him and told him, you know, I don't got nothing to do with you shorties killing each other. My job is to try and help all y'all. He never forgot that. And that's how, how we got close because a lot of people turned them turned them turned them away. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They didn't they didn't embrace him when they found out that Keith had a problem with him. They like, oh man, fuck him, because they didn't want to uh, Keith. ruin any opportunities right. of possibly working with Keith or, or things of that nature. But with me, I'm a I'm OG. Like I don't I can't let no shorties dictate my pace. I gotta stand for what's right or or sit the fuck down. Right. Just so people know, uh FBG Duck was a young man who was killed in Chicago. Uh, I guess it was a hit. Or why don't you explain what happened, Bo? Because you might do it better than me. Yeah, I, I don't know what happened. With, with, but I mean, with, how he with, how he got killed? Oh well, you know, he was doing some shopping downtown, and you know, somebody pulled up, and you know, and he was shot down. 
Broad daylight. Uh, broad daylight. I think it was about one or two in the afternoon. Yeah. In in an area where all this generational wealth is, where you, you just Street. don't expect that type of stuff to happen. Right. You know what I'm saying? In so that area, that, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, in that area, you ain't expecting nothing to happen. Like, tell them what's you know what in what that saying? area. Tell them what's in that area. Man, you got Louis Vuitton. Is, uh, yeah, the, 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 everything. Louis Burberry, Vuitton, Gucci, Burberry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can't any any anything you can name. High fashion is there. High fashion. This is where everybody go, and everybody go there and 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 feel safe. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? So. I can't lie. Once, once I heard about that, that made me a step back and and say, "Damn, yeah, I've too. been lacking." You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. ain't no place safe in the city. Yeah. I, and I looked at downtown as being one of the safest places to be. Uh, uh, places to be exactly. in the city. It really in the world, if you ask me. But when you think about it, everybody was getting those PPP loans. Everybody. Uh, uh, got money and was getting money through the scams and everybody downtown. You know what I'm saying? So ain't no telling. It started after that happened. I started looking around. I'm like, man, it ain't nothing but niggas downtown. You know what I'm saying? It, it never was like that when I was coming up. Yeah, I seen that too. I, I seen that too. I actually was driving. I was on uh, Michigan Avenue and I was downtown. I was passing the uh, Louis store and I looked to my left. And I promise you, Bo, it was a line of niggas. It was about 20 of them. And I'm like saying to myself, like, how the fuck all these niggas is going up in the loo? And, and they was waiting on the outside. There was a store full of people on the inside. And I guess I attributed it to the PPP loan thing. But, yeah, you know, God rest FGB's duck soul. Uh, you know, I know his moms was hurt because she's been on social media several times speaking about different things and and I can just understand that feeling. But you cheated on me just now. And the reason why I say that is because you also bought in somebody that you affiliated with and associate with, which is Waka Flocka. Break down how you got involved with Waka Flocka and what y'all do. Uh, I got involved with Waka. Well, I met Waka through Gucci. Okay. Uh, Gucci had a show here in Chicago. And uh, he had a problem with, <clears throat> at the time, Jojo Capone. I didn't know that they, you know, who he had a problem with. Okay. He, his 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 road manager G Boy called my cousin uh Sip Mississippi and said, Man, uh, I got Gucci man, he got a show in Chicago, but there's some GDs saying that he can't come there. You know, we vice law, so I'm like, so you know, he's like, Man, you can hold hold him hold us down. And that's my cousin, man. So he like, Yeah, yeah, we hold hold y'all down. So uh, we came we we came out about 200 deep and we held them down but i just still didn't know who they had the problem with and then jojo called me and was like man why are you protecting these niggas and i say man uh shit i ain't protecting these niggas i didn't know who you know who we had a problem with you know what i'm saying it's this my my cousin them people so you know we we gonna hold we hold them down and out of the respect that we have for each other Jojo, he, you know, they stepped down and they like, man, well, they gave him a pass and was like, shit, you know, we catch him outside of that, he fooled. And I'm like, shit, he fooled. And and they then they proved it on another time because he came for another show and he was supposed to get do this feature for me. He didn't do it. So I told him, man, we ain't holding you down. We left. And when we left, he left. You know what I'm saying? And he lucky he did, because if he didn't leave, if he would have went to that show, JoJo and them was up there deep. They were going to fuck that boy whole life around. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, he, so he left. But Walker, Walker came up here. With, he was with Gucci uh, the first time. And he saw how deep we came and how we held him down. And uh, he like, man, bro, he like, I, I like you, bro. I want to fuck with you, bro. You know what I'm saying? And he wasn't even rapping in. You know, but we always kept a, a, a close knit relationship. Right. And he started rapping, had a, a song that, that took off, and he was a real nigga. He came back and was like, bro, I told you I was going to fuck with you. And he came back and, and, and got me. And because of that, you know what I'm saying? That put me in a whole different situation. And I made I made a lot of money fucking with Walker. He never made me sign no paperwork or nothing. Put the chain around my neck and, and, and was like, man, get money. 
So wait a minute, you were, you were part of his uh, record label. What's his re- what Waka's record label? It was BSM Brick Squad Monopoly. Okay, BSM. Yeah, I remember because I know Gucci got uh, ten seventeen. Yeah, he do now. He had Brick Squad first, and then he changed it back to uh, ten seventeen. So what's going? So it went from So Icy Boys to Brick Squad, and then ten seventeen. So what's going on with Walker right now? Like, are you guys still doing shows? Is he doing shows? Or I, I then I think I read that he was retiring or something like that. He retired, but he's still doing a lot of shows. He he just don't do them for his fan base. The majority of the people that's keeping him going when he had went switched over to the EDM uh, was white white people. So his his fan base is white, really. You know what I'm saying? Like the ones who working them weekly. Like he 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 stay going. It be it be. A crowd full of white people, man. It's, it's Does that bug crazy. you out like now? Like when you go to a club or go to a show and see a rapper and you look outside and it's just a thousand white people and ten blacks. Does that how does that, like what do you think when you see that? I'd be like hip hop it, it, it's evolved, you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's it's bigger than life now. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just let you know that 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 it's it's bigger than just the hood. Just just the hood. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. But in a way, I think that's kind of dangerous because what it also says is that they validate us. Like, you need white America to validate black America. And some people might see that as a racist comment, but, I mean, it is what it is because it's really truth to that. You know, when you when when white people get behind you, that's your money. That's the support because black people, we're going to bootleg your shit. <laughs> you know, we yeah, gonna, that's true. We're going to do whatever we got to do to get to listen to it. We're going to try to sneak in through the back door. We don't want to pay. But with them white folks, it's a... It's a whole different thing. Like, so do you have any artists now yourself? Yeah, yeah, I got a, I got a few of them that I'm managing. Okay. Tell uh, us about them. You know, we got man, we got L Hitter. He had uh we had him a deal with uh APG okay. in the Atlantic. But the, the the deal that he was structured in before got in the way of that one. So we finally got him out of his out of that deal. So now we push him forward. Now he got a uh project about to drop okay. next uh next week so he you know we, we got him working then we got big balls demo the radio picking all his shit up uh his shit doing good uh we got cl cap we got uh she go cream tutu secure uh nitty that is uh man we got we got a bunch uh Sharnice nicole we got man a bunch of a bunch of artists man then we got our own videographer uh solo visuals you know what i'm saying like uh rj the mvp is the is the producer uh signed to me he the one who produced all year gang and them and all the big records that uh that they'll hit a got uh he produced a bunch of stuff for when you, FBG Duck. I, I i am very familiar with el hitter uh i've had him in the magazine and i think we did something before with you included let me ask you about his music and something just keyed in on me. When you hear Chicago music, you hear a lot of gang banging in the music. Like it's all right. about going after each other's ops and all that. And because you manage these artists, I want to ask you a two part question. The first question is describe the music that they make, meaning if it's, you know, uh, gang bang oriented or is it just fun, happy music. And the second part of it is if they are involved gang banging verbally. Understand what I said verbally. I'm not saying an active participant. How do you manage as the manager to keep them from really living out what they're talking about? Well, you know, first off, uh, uh, I won't even put my name next to nothing. That's talking about dead ops and things of that nature. If you're disrespecting your ops and, and, and things of that nature, then this ain't the team for you. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm hands on with, with my team and, I, and I, I have my shit structured. A certain way so i'm not gonna let you if that's what you want to do then you need to find somebody who's gonna put that out you know what i'm saying because i'm not gonna i'm not gonna support uh that type of that type of music you know what i'm saying so you know my team they they they, they got different type of music they make some of them make street shit you know you can talk the street shit and you can talk about what you see in the hood and what go on in the hood you know what I'm saying? You might even have one foot in and one foot out, but the things that you got your your your, your feet in in the hood and actually in the streets, you can't put that on on wax. You can't talk about no ops. You can't. I I don't, I don't do that. You know right. what I'm saying? And and I don't allow nobody around me to do it. Right. So you think that's a part of a 
a social conscience to support change because a lot of killings and the things that are happening in Chicago is as a result of that type of music. So are you participating in trying to change that whole st structure, if that's the right word? And do you yes, think it's sure. effective? Is it being? It's definitely effective. If, if we had more, uh, we had more labels and more uh, management and more teams that, that didn't allow or accept that going on, then they, they would stop it. Right. But because these labels, I'm gonna tell you a story, right? Okay. I got, uh, I helped uh, line this artist from Chicago uh, a, a deal up, right? Okay. I gave him a, I gave him the lawyer. I gave him all the stuff that he didn't have that he needed to get his deal structured right. Right. Okay. Now I ain't gonna put his name out there because I don't put his business out there. But the label signed him. Okay. After they signed him, I talked to the label. I said, listen, now you know y'all signed him. Y'all gave him a little money. Now it's time to start changing the narrative. Start getting. You know, shorty, shorty, 16 years old. So, you know, uh, 15, 15 or 16, I'm like, he a shorty. So let's try and save his life. Right. Okay. Start having him shoot different types of videos where he ain't got all the guns and all that in the videos. Even though shorty, he young, but he really living that life. I said, man, try and change that up and switch that up. Right. They told me, man, that's what's working for me. Why well, switch it up? I want him to keep doing exactly what he's doing. And I said, well, doing exactly what he's doing is going to get him killed in the long run. Nah, if he move a little different, you know, they they don't give a fuck about us. Like, L. Hitler's name was L. Hitler, right? Right. Before he got his deal. Do you know they wouldn't give him his give him the deal and give us the money with the name L. Hitler? And it wasn't even H-I-T-L-E-R. It was H-I-T-L-A. Right. They said, man, we can't do that. Now, if he changed his name, we got this bag for you right now. So he, you know, he. I told him, look, we can wait it out and still bill. Wait, 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 wait. wait. I got to interrupt you. So break down that mentality for me or break down that conversation because I get it, but I want everybody else to get it clearly. You're saying to me that the label decided that they would not mess with him because he's of the name Hitler as opposed to Hitler. Why? Yeah. Why? You know, they're not going to let you talk about nobody who's hurt or harmed their people. But you can talk about your own people and 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 and, and, and talk about this shit to, to, to kill your own people all day long. And they'll give you the money. They'll fund you and, 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 and keep funding you for doing it. But the minute you say something about them or their people or... or or, 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 or call yourself a name of somebody that, that did something. They people, they shutting it down. Damn. You will not see the light of day. And this came from uh, from every label. Every uh, label. How did that make every you label. feel, man? Like, let me ask you this. Not, I want to ask you two parts again. Not only how did it make you feel, but when you first seen that and you was w realizing or witnessing what was happening, when did you realize, like, God damn, like, how did that come together in your mind? It, it just made me realize that, hey, we pawns out here. We got to start looking out for each other because they don't give a fuck about us. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. They they not going they gonna to protect their own. And, and it's our job to start protecting our own. It, it, like, that was the first time that it, I was really woke up. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and I hate, to, hate that, to say that, but, you know, as old as I am, I was I was asleep. Right. That right there is what made me say, hey, all that talking about dead niggas and talking about this and that, we not on that right. at all. You right. know, because these people don't give a fuck about us. They're giving us the bag as long as we talking about each other, killing off each other. But the minute you say something about them or or or, or uh try and replicate something that 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 they find offensive. They pulling the money. Ain't nothing. We ain't giving you shit. You wow. know what I'm saying? Wow. And you know what? If people feel like that, and, and, and I've heard stuff like that before, and, and you know, it, statistics show and prove that that's actually what happens because it's, it's not really a big secret in the black community. We know that. And this is why sometimes I'm dumbfounded because I don't understand. If we know that, like you know now, we still continue to do it. 
Yeah. Like, and that's what's sad. That that's a bad thing. Anyway, listen, man. Hey, it's early. I know you got stuff to do. I appreciate you for coming on my show. My last question to you is, what can we do as black men to try to make a change? And not only Chicago, but in L.A., in New York, in Atlanta. How do we try to fix the problem that our black youth are going through? Really, we need real resources in the hood. We need to be real money. Uh, uh, now, this this is a program that 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 that, that actually was implemented here and it worked it's called the flip program what we did was all the hot spots in the city well the, the main hot spots in the city we found four or five of the guys who have influence in those areas they all got paid like a job a hundred dollars a day five hundred dollars a week for all of them to stay on their side we not i'm not telling nobody put the guns down then they get killed because I told them put the gun there. No, don't do no slide. Play defense. If somebody come through here, you protect yourself. You have a right to protect yourself. But all the internet beefing and all the going slide looking for your ops, leave that shit alone. you getting paid to stay on your side and keep the peace. If something happened, we got inroads over there where we can call, hey, what's going on, to try and mediate these situations. And in those areas that we implement, implemented that, program in the the crime rate uh was reduced by in some areas 60 to 70 percent wow so that's so that showed me that if these little guys are eating and and they're eating for for something righteous and 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 we bring more programs in and 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 more funding in to put money in their pockets the, the 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 violence going to go down. It's going to go down. When you have something to live for uh, or got something coming in or something worth living for, you're less likely to go out and par- partake in the bullshit. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Which is the reason why they say, oh, man, he he ain't on nothing. He a pussy because, you know, he don't want to do nothing. No, that's because that man getting money. That man got things to live for. Right. You just got to open their eyes and show them that life is a beautiful thing. You got a lot of people that depend on you, that need you. Hey, Fuck all that bullshit. Get to the money. You right. know what I'm saying? And enjoy life. And I think if we had more resources and more people, more older people stepping up to the plate, more older people who had a voice and who have and who have respect or used to have names in those communities stepping in and not downgrading and, and talking about these shorties, but really, really talking to them and really trying to help them change, they'll listen. Right. I hear a lot of old people saying, man, they don't listen. Them young niggas don't want to listen. But they do. They will listen. They they embrace you. They just got to know that it's genuine and they got to know you really give a fuck. And you can't come in, oh, man, fuck these young niggas. They, no, I come in like, hey, I understand what you're going through. I ain't here to judge you. I've been there. Right. I done did all that. I've been to the joint for a shooting. I've been to the joint for a robbery. I went to the penitentiary for, for a, a drug conspiracy. So I done did it all. You know what I'm saying? And, and and serve my time for every one of those cases. Right. So I can't talk about you or, or, or put you down because some of y'all looked up to me coming up. You right. know what I'm saying? Got it. So it's my job to try and right some of those wrongs without judging. You just have to do it the right way. We get more people doing that. We start seeing more change. That's a fact. Yeah, I, I agree with that a thousand percent. And, and the last thing I want to say uh, to key in on what you just said is I don't know how powerful you don't even know if I don't know how powerful you if you know or realize what you just said. And when you said trying to correct some of your wrongs, I think that's key. I think that's what motivates and moves a lot of brothers who've been in the streets and have done, you know, different things, be it from robbery to whatever. You know, when you know that you got a fucked up past and you know that you've done wrong, there's only one way to fix it. There's only one way to even out the board, and that's for you to now get up off your ass and correct your wrongs by doing right by somebody else. And that's respect. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm big on respect and honor, and and we got to have a code. We all live by these codes. And I think sometimes those codes uh, are based on your age and your mentality. And I think you've uh, reached that level with what you're doing just by saying what you said. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. everybody ain't going to get that. Like, sometimes niggas got to grow up. 
You know what I mean? You can't be Peter Pan forever. <laughs> so at the end right. of the day, when you get to that level, then you understand. You got to go through some shit to grow through some shit. And that's just what it is. Bo, I appreciate you, man. Yo, I, I appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, what's the name of your organization so people can get at you? It's uh, Perfect Vision Empowered. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and the, the, the uh, management company is RTS, Road to Success. Okay, that's what it is, man. Thanks, Bo. Appreciate having you on the show. Appreciate you, man. Thanks for having me, bro. Not a problem. All right.